What's up, ladies and gents? I'm your host, Mr. One, and welcome to 2016. That is right. And our first walkthrough of the year is going to be the Resident Evil HD Remastered survival walkthrough for Chris. That's right. We're going to be playing this on real survival. If you want to check out my Jill walkthrough that I did about a year ago when this game was released, then please, I will make sure to uh, annotate that as well as put it in the description. So thank you guys for all the love and support. 2016 is going to be a great year. I've decided to start off with this game because, of course, coming out in a few days after this will be released, will be Resident Evil Zero Remastered. So very excited about that. We're playing this on the PC with 1080p 60 frames a second, just like we did the Jill walkthrough. However, this is going to be on real survival. Resident Evil. So the reason I decided to do this is I wanted to challenge myself and to give you guys the best content out there possible, uh, kind of going back all the way since we've been doing this now for six years, that is correct. We have been on YouTube for six years under this channel name, and I want to make sure that we start off this year with a bang. It's going to be our best year ever. So with that being said, I don't talk during cutscenes or any of that kind of stuff. I'm going to show you how to complete this game on, uh, for Chris under real survival. It is going to be a little difficult. There's not going to be a no damage walkthrough. So this is if you're coming into this for the first time, but I'm at least going to guide you and help you out so that you're able to do this. Uh, and of course, just have fun doing it as well. So we're going to do this under the BSAA uniform. The reason I've chose this is because we did the Jill uniform under BSAA. You guys requested for me to do this so long ago, and I'm finally getting a chance to do it. So thank you guys so much out there. I love every single one of you, and hopefully you guys will enjoy the walkthrough. And without further ado, it's go time. Alpha team is flying around the forest zone, situated in northwest Raccoon City, where we are searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo team, who disappeared during the middle of their mission. Haven't found it yet? No, not yet, Brad. Bizarre murder cases have recently occurred in Raccoon City. There are outlandish reports of families being attacked by a group of about 10 people. Victims were apparently eaten. The Bravo team was sent in to investigate, but we lost contact. Look, Chris! Bravo team's helicopter was a derelict. Save for the remaining body of Kevin. We continued our search for the other members, and it turned into a nightmare. way. Damn it! Make for that mansion! 
Enter the survival horror. There are only three STARS members left now. Captain Wesker, Jill, and myself. We don't know where Barry is. <sighs> is everyone all right? Barry. Where's Barry? He's... No. What was that? I'll go and check it out. All right. Jill and I will stay and secure this area. Chris? Take care. Yeah. All right, ladies and gents, here we go. If you want to know what I'm using to record this, I'm actually using the XSplit Gamecaster to record this, and hopefully uh, the quality is good. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. But if you want to see a secret cutscene, um, this is the only chance you're ever going to be able to see this. Go ahead and actually head back out. That gunfire. I'm counting on you to investigate, Chris. You got it, Wesker. I know it's not much, but it's at least something a little extra. So you'll notice I'm also using the alternate control scheme, just like I did in the Jill walkthrough. I actually prefer to use this one, uh, since it is more modern. However, if you want to, you can still use the tank controls by using the D-pad. So it's really up to you. Again, this is the PC version that I'm playing with an Xbox One Elite controller. So I have it set up uh, pretty good for me. We've got those extra buttons in the back of the controller to actually help me do uh, some, some really cool things. So. So the first time I saw that cutscene right there back on the GameCube, and I want to say, I think it was 2001 or 2, was just mind-boggling. I, I don't think we've ever seen a game that looked as good as this game does back then. Of course, this was pre-rendered scenes and things like that, but it was just amazing. And of course, it looks even more amazing now, better than I ever thought it could look. So very excited with how they did this HD remastered, and very excited uh, to look forward to Resident Evil Zero. Wesker? Jill? Where did they go? Alright, go ahead and pick up the handgun here, as we're going to be using that for a little bit. We're going to go ahead and go back right where we came. There's a lot of backtracking in this game, so you're going to realize that really quick that you're going to be doing a lot of going into areas over and kind of over again, so I just want to warn you about that. But this is obviously one of those games where you don't actually mind it. It's a, it's a, it is a big mansion, but there are a lot of rooms that you're going to enter multiple times, and each time you come back, something will be a little different, and I think that's what adds to the game. So we're going to go ahead and pick up the tape. And we'll watch that, of course, towards the end of the walkthrough. As we'll actually have the ability then. This is going to be the first time where you're going to really, really uh, start to get into where some enemies are. So what I'm going to do uh, is go ahead and equip the handgun. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get a no damage or not. Uh, uh, it's not my goal to get a no damage walkthrough. It's never one of my goals like that. Is I want to really enjoy the experience and not get frustrated at some things. But, however, we're still going to try our best to, um, to you know, get at least amount of damage as possible. Which, right there, is a chance that you can get it. Now, using the control scheme that I'm using makes it a lot more difficult to evade enemies. So keep that in mind as well. All right, so it looks like we're just able to get around in there. That's a little tricky to do. Uh, it's definitely a lot quicker if you're going for a speed walkthrough to do exactly what I just did there, but I definitely don't recommend it if you don't want to, you know, take too much of a risk. We're going to go this way right now, because we want to get this zombie over to the edge of this railing. 
which will give us just enough to do something. Now, you can do this in any order you want. I mean, there's no specific order that you have to do, like some of the things in this first video. Obviously, you know, you can't get into some areas unless you have a specific key, but this one right here, you can actually do this now as opposed to later. It just depends on what you want. Uh, later, though, we'll make it a little bit more difficult as, you know, obviously there's going to be other zombies coming through here later on in the game, so that's why you want to probably take care of it now. And we can just drop it there and it'll save and we'll always be able to go back and pick that up. So that's what's really cool about that. Alright, so next up we're going to do some target practice. We're going to head outside. So I do like to, to fire and shoot these enemies out here, these zombies, uh, just so I can get used to the fact that there is no auto-aim. So make sure you try to aim as close as you can. So you can see there that... Uh, and usually that sound means that they're actually dead. Now these guys do not come back at you and turn into crimsons, or which I will prefer to as uh, crimsies. Now that means he's not dead, so. And now he's dead. Usually you can hear like a, a long lasting scream that kind of proves that he's actually dead. But these guys will not come back and haunt your dreams, so you can go ahead and take care of them. We're going to get that golden arrow back out. We are going to examine it. And remove the arrowhead. Alright, so now that we've done that, we are going to use it. Now, we will be back here another time. A little bit later on, not too much later on, but a little bit for something big. Uh, here's, you know, obviously, you can use the little trick to get down the stairs faster, but I, it's, it just depends on if you want to be one of those guys that goes through it really quickly. Obviously, if you get no damage and you, I think, finish it in under three hours, you can get a rocket launcher, which is really cool. We're going to go ahead and look at the book that we just saw and grab the mansion key. The Book of Curses. Tells you what you need to do. You need to grab four masks. Which, like I said, once we have those four masks, we'll be back in here. Which means you'll need all of your slots for those. I mean, it takes up four of your six masks, so... We took care of these two, so we don't have to worry about them. We're going to go ahead and grab shotgun ammo. We are going to need this a little bit later. And we got the space right now. Make sure I'm all... Yep. Make sure I'm all fully reloaded and stocked. As you never know. I love the ambient noises. It's so great. This game is absolutely amazing. It's one of those completionist type of games where you want to complete it 100%. You want to do everything you can to, uh, to do the best. We're going to go ahead and unlock this door. Use the mansion key. We'll be going through there a little bit later. Probably in the next video. You can see sometimes the camera can be just a little bit weird, especially with this control scheme, the alternate control scheme. It does take a while to get used to and, and to have it work correctly, but I promise you that it'll feel a lot better using it, unless you've played the original Resident Evil games a lot and you just got used to the tank controls of the old PlayStation, so. Um, I've been able to, as you can see, in this uniform, zombies don't really react to Chris as much as they do in other uniforms. So, as you can see, he's just kind of standing there. Now, this is where you can kind of try to to get good at um, dodging. As you can see there, where you can use the tank controls to back up slowly, and then wait till he actually maneuvers around you, tries to lunge for you, and you're able to get by him without taking any damage, of course. Again, I don't know if I'm going to do a no damage. I'm probably not. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be multiple times where I'm going to get hit by bosses and other, and other zombies here and there if I make a mistake. And I do apologize for that. But this is not the, the be-all, end-all type of walkthrough. This is more of a, uh, if this is your first time trying to tackle this mode type of walkthrough.
Alright, so you notice we pick up this key. We have to have this key because we don't have the ability to, um... Oh, we didn't make it. See, that's what I was talking about. Um, there's actually two different ways you can get around this area, and I, I do wish I was able to do it. But, uh, for you non-patient people, if you wait on the corner there, you can get around him, but sometimes if you wait too long, you can't. And unfortunately, that was one of those times where we can't, so obviously, this will not be a no-damage walkthrough, but that's okay. Never wanted it to be. You can just walk straight past this guy. He doesn't care. But the other way is you can go around the table, and you can go slowly. It takes a little bit more time, but you don't ever run the risk of getting caught or bit. And remember, we don't have any defensive weapons just yet. Now, I went this way so we don't have to deal with those two zombies that are still on the second floor above the dining room. So we're going to go ahead and get back into the dining room here. Instead of going where we first were when we picked up the the golden arrow. Now we're over here. I think you should be able to go this way. Yeah. Remember there is a zombie up here. Alright, so this one we're going to have to take out these guys, but we will be able to possibly burn them. Um, it is way better to take... Oh, I messed up there. It's alright, I shot him though. If we can get this guy on the stairs, we'll be good to go. Yes. Oof. We almost I hate that. When the camera changes, everything just changes. Um, we decided to leave him alive. Just one shot and worked our way around him. Sometimes that doesn't always work, but... If you guys want a little bit of information... Um, there's two ways that you can kill zombies in this game. Obviously, you know, destruction of the head or shoot them a lot of times. Uh, or incineration is the only way that they won't come back as crimsons. So, some of some we are going to burn and then some we're not. You can see there's several kinds of serums over here. We're going to be getting to that just a little bit later. But for right now, we don't need the survival knife. We don't need... A weapon, actually, of any sort. So we're going to keep these three. Shotgun shells and the two keys. We are going to pick up a broken shotgun, which is going to allow us to get the main real shotgun. But remember, things are different in this walkthrough as they were in Jill. So you'll notice that I'm in, going in a different order. It's not completely the same. And, of course, that's what makes the, the replayability so much fun. So we're picking up our first defensive item. This will allow us not to be bit by a zombie. And it tells you how you need to use them. If you, Make sure you have it set to automatic. That way it'll automatically use it. I don't understand why you would ever want to not set it to automatic. Because there might be a time that you forget to use it. But if you don't set it to automatic, you have to press LB to use it. We're going to go ahead and pick up the ink ribbon here. And there's kerosene here, which we can use in a little bit. But for right now, we're just going to keep going. I don't know 100% exactly what I'm going to do. I always kind of come up with this stuff on the fly. I usually, the way that I record is I usually play this mission uh, up to a certain point. We'll go ahead and go since he's on the stairs. Uh, I play it up to a certain point, And when I'm at the save point, then I'll start over and then I'll actually do the recording. So I never know exactly what I'm going to do. But here's one of those instances where you can stuff the flash grenade in his mouth, and you can actually blow him up right now, but um, we're not going to. Sometimes in these smaller corridors, it's actually a lot harder to get around these guys, although it's not really if you use the whole tank controls. The tank controls are the best way to get around zombies, because you can easily just like back up a little bit, wait for them to lunge at you, and then move around. But, you know, I don't always like to use that. So if you have a defensive item, you know, we're going to use it. Alright, it's time to get the real shotgun now. This will be the last section in this video. Now there's a map up here we're going to go ahead and grab. You don't have to grab this map if you know what you're doing, but since I want to show you guys everything, 
We're gonna go ahead and grab it. This map will help you, especially when you're trying to find something, like, uh, you know, something up ahead in the next video. So that's why I'm gonna pick it up. Take it, you grab it, tells you where the item boxes are, the typewriter that we've already seen, the doors that we can get into, and the ones that we can't. So you can see what we have in the item box here, over there in this location. And if you go to the left here, you can grab a defensive key. However, here, uh, there's a zombie that will come at you. He's a little bit harder to dodge, therefore it's not really worth it. However, it is worth it to get our first actual real defensive weapon instead of the, the grenade. This dagger will make it to where you do not get bitten if a zombie grabs you. Alright. You know what? I gotta take a little bit of a break. I gotta go uh, do number one here real quick. And then we'll uh, continue. Actually, you know what? I need a good shower. All I wanted to do was take a nice clean bath, relax a little bit, but no, you had to be in the way. But we'll go ahead and grab this old key. Get out of there as soon as you can. With Jill, she'll actually kill him automatically, so unfortunately, Chris doesn't know how to use the stomp method, I guess. Gonna use that same key. And we're gonna grab the chemicals that we need for the next video. And it'll showcase some of the enemies that we're going to be fighting off a little bit later. Now, we did take a little bit of damage from one of those piece of craps. So, we're going to go ahead and pick up a green herb. And we're going to go ahead and use it. It'll bring us back to fine. And because I want to be a completionist of some sorts, we're going to go ahead and take both of these and we're going to mix these herbs. There's another uh, kerosene, which will come in handy. Combine these two items. Now remember the item boxes do not go with you, so whatever you put in a specific item box, it will stay there the whole time. And never go anywhere else. So please keep that in mind. I'm confused. There we go. <laughs> oh. I just, I don't play, you know, I haven't played these games in so long, therefore it's a little disorienting. I'm sure you're experiencing it too. But I think after a few videos, uh, it'll start to become natural again, and I think that'll definitely help out. Alright, so we've got two defensive items now, so that means we can be attacked by a zombie twice. And we just got enough space for the shotgun. And of course you want to take the fake shotgun, the broken shotgun. And replace it back if you want to make out of this room alive. We are not Jill, but all the same, we would not like to become a Chris Sandwich. Which is actually my real name. Not Chris Sandwich, but yeah, Chris. <laughs> the name's Sandwich. Chris Sandwich. Didn't really have a good spy ring to it, does it? Alright, so we pretty much got everything we need now, so we just got one more zombie that we're going to take care of here. Even though this is a pretty easy zombie to get out of the way of, but we're going to go ahead and... He's actually one of the easiest zombies to take out, especially when you have a shotgun, even on these harder difficulties. As you can see, one shot with a headshot always takes this guy out, so... Ooh, 
the lightning. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the first part for Resident Evil Chris Real Survival Walkthrough. Um, again, I never said this was going to be a no damage, so I just wanted to put that out there. But we're going to pick up this old key here. And of course, we have a lot of item management to get to here in this next video. And we're already in a safe point. we got the flash to pick up. Cash is getting a flask. Um, yeah. So uh, thank you guys for watching. And of course, I will see you next time. Peace out. Bitches.